to start with, I'll just ask, what is this populist moment that we are currently experiencing? Well, what I understand by populist moment is the fact that we are experiences, experiencing a series of resistance uh, to the what I call the post-democratic uh, uh, condition, which has been a consequence of uh, 30 years of neoliberal hegemony. In which, by, by post-democracy, I mean, in fact, two aspects. There is one which I call post-politics, is the fact that, uh, th th this I develop in my book on the political, uh, is the fact that, uh, no, because, the f basically, I would say, the uh, responsible of that are the uh, social democratic party, the center-left, which move you know, so much towards the, the center that, finally, there is no basic difference between the policy that they offer or center-right, center-left. So it means that when the citizens go to vote, well, I mean, they don't really have a choice, you know. It's, it's, uh, and so that's what I call post-politics, the, the lack of a possibility of alternative for a citizen election. And, of course, by that I understand basically what's at stake is the idea <coughs> of popular sovereignty. That's one aspect of the post uh, um, democratic condition. The other one uh, is uh, a process of oligarchization of our societies. And that's the consequence of the primacy of financial capital, you know, during the era uh, of neoliberal hegemony, and the fact that as a consequence of that, I mean, we've seen uh, really a process of pauperization and precarization, not only, of course, of the popular classes, but also of the middle class, which are some people are in speaking of the disappearance of the middle class. So those two aspects, you know, post-politics and oligarchization of our societies, and by that, of course, I understand the fact that a consequence of the politics of austerity and, uh, as I was saying, uh, financial capitalism, there has been an exponential increase in equality. You know, now we've got a real gulf between a group, um, each time, smaller, that is very becoming very, very richer, and the rest of the people who are, you know, really in a process of precarization and pauperization. Uh, well, since I would say the, 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 the beginning of the 2000, uh, I would put 2011, we're beginning to see a lot of resistance against, against, against that, you know, the movement of the uh, of, uh, Occupy Wall Street, the Indignados in Spain, uh, and uh, at the beginning, at the very beginning, that, that was basically the, 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 it manifested itself to right-wing populism. It was more of the right-wing populist parties who were uh, presenting themselves, uh, as done, giving the answer to that, you know, and say, oh, well, we are going to give back the people, the, the um, voice that they've been confiscated by the elites. But what is really interesting is that more recently with the, the development of, well, first, uh, um, Series in Greece that unfortunately came to power but was not able to implement its program because of the, the uh, what we can really call the financial coup of the European Union. But then Podemos in Spain, Jean-Luc Mélenchon in, 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 in France. So those are movement, uh, anti uh, system movement, but from the point of view of the left. This is what I call the populist moment. You know, the, the, the fact that the, both from the level of, uh, side of the left and the right, they are resistances against, you know, basically, we are living a crisis of neoliberalism and, and, we, uh, which, and we are, you know, different people who are putting into question the system, but fortunately, you know, we are not yet in a, in a moment in which a clear um, alternative are developed. It's a moment, Gramsci called that, you know, an interregnum, an organic crisis, and I think that's very characteristic of what I call the populist moment. You say in this post-politics world that there is no alternative. Is there, are there degrees of alternative? Is someone like Bernie Sanders, Alessandro Ocasio-Cortez, Jeremy Corbyn, a democratic yeah, socialist? absolutely, absolutely. In fact, this is, uh, uh, when I gave example of what I call uh, a left populism, I also give an example, Bernie Sanders, uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, because, you know, Left populism is a strategy. Huh? Uh, it's, it's not something, it doesn't, you don't need to have a party, for instance, the, the, the Labour Party, the then called, oh no, we've become a left populist party, of course not. But one can say that the, the, the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn is implementing a left populist strategy. And so is uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, 
in the same way, you know, as Melanchon and Iglesias. But of course, it takes different form according to the different countries, you know. So it's not that there is, there is one left populist strategy. But basically, the left populist strategy means to, what is crucial in both, in all cases, is for thinking to question the hegemon, hegemony of neoliberalism. And that is very clear in the case of Corbyn. You know, there's a break with the, poly, uh, le, 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 Politics of Blair, and it, it, it came in, uh, also in many other countries. So this this is what I understand by left populism. So you say, possibly quite rightly, that um, the way that left populism is developing is um, context dependent, so it's different in different countries. But to resist neoliberalism, which is a global phenomenon, which may articulate itself differently in different countries, but still operates in a global way, how do we intersect the different ways in which left populism um, develops and articulates itself between countries um, to create an internationalist leftist populist front? Well, I think that uh, uh, one should begin, you know, at home, so to speak, even if, if home is, is, is understood as the European Union or the context of Europe, you know, because uh, I, I think that all the different conjunctures need to be understood differently. For instance, in my book, For Left Populism, I say clearly that I'm examining the conjuncture today in Western Europe. Uh, and that I don't include in that the situation in, uh, uh, for instance, post-communist countries, because I don't think that the same kind of analysis can be used to understand the uh, Orban in, in uh, uh, Hungary, or Kaczynski in, in Poland, because those countries have got a very different history from our history, you know, and, and the, 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 the fact that they've been under communist domination is, is something which is really important. So I, I, I think that one, I don't believe one can make analysis, and I know that people will, you know, they agree with me, but I think that one always needs to start from a specific conjuncture. Uh, in fact, I, I'm even saying that in the case of Europe, one need to begin instead of being say okay let's let's uh, uh, establish a European project of left populism. I say no. Let's begin by thinking what should we do in Britain, and then, of course, establish a synergy between the different movements because obviously there is no way we can in Europe fight against neoliberalism only at the level of France or, or so. So that's very important. But you need to start from. Uh, 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 national things. And of course, obviously, there are a series of issues on which, for instance, uh, it will be very important to establish um, some kind of uh, international collaboration, of, obviously, for instance, the, the question of environment. Uh, but all that, my, my uh, point is that we always need to begin, you know, from the concrete situation and then establish synergies. And, and I don't think it made sense to Think what kind of you know international uh, strategy could we develop to fight against neoliberalism? For instance, you know, the, and I, I know very well because I'm very close to uh, uh, Latin America. I go there very often. I mean, the situation it is very different. You know, of course they, we've got things coming. Of course they are fighting against neoliberalism, but they are fighting according to a, a condition which are very different. So once we have established. Uh, uh, um, different movement, then of course it's important to have uh, you know mo moment of um, in in which we are going to help to establish collaboration, but it's, it should not be something coming from you know the the, the top and and then going back to uh, bottom. I think, for instance, one of the problem with the alter globalization movement uh, and the fact that you know it is more, more or less disappear you now is because they were not really uh, establishing rules in their different countries, you know. You had all those uh, ac 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 activists meeting in, in Porto Alegre, and, and, and among them, in fact, a lot were ONG, you know. So uh, that also was a little bit of a problem because ONGs are not really of usually very grassroots rooted in countries, you know. So, um, and they were meeting and having fantastic uh, discussion among you know people from India from, but then those people were going back in their country, 
and they did not have any uh, real impact there, you know. So I, I think that, that we need to, and I've been discussing that with several of my friends who were very involved in the alto globalization movement, and, and they are saying, yeah, that was the problem, you know. So no, we, they, they acknowledge the fact that no, we need to start from the national and then go to the regional, and after that, of course, you know, they may be an international form of solidarity, but uh, not the other way around. As you've just described, um, establishing how we establish left populism is con is context dependent, is dependent on which con which country we're living in. But before we move into the specifics, possibly of the UK, are there lessons that can be drawn between the models of le left populism that are being developed um, across different countries? Well, I mean, it depends what you understand by the different countries, different countries of the European Union, uh, or uh, between the experiences, because when, where, where they have been really interesting experiences of left populism in Latin America, for instance. No? And I think, of course, we've got to, 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 to learn from... Uh, um, what have been the difficulties? Because it's true that after what they've called the pink uh, 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 wave, you know, we, we have been seeing in the last years them kind of coming back to right-wing government. But I don't think, by the way, that this is going to, to uh, uh, follow uh, uh, the same pattern. Because, for instance, we are going to have next month a uh, very important election in Argentina, where it's almost certain that there will be a coming back to power of the, the, the Peronist. Uh, so, because the experience of uh, Macri has been a total disaster, total disaster, you know. And, uh, and people, people, you know, even the, the, if at some point they were uh, a bit disappointed with some uh, problem uh, uh, of the, you know, le Kirchner government, the moment of the really great success of left populist movement, national popular movement, they call themselves, it was a moment where the price of commodities were very high, you know. So they had a lot of money for redistribution. Uh, and then, of course, there was a crisis, and suddenly people who had been accustomed to, you know, uh -huh, they, was, they, they, they could not, the, the government simply could not follow uh, in the same thing. So there have been some kind of... Uh, um, a disappointment is, oh, you know, we were promised that. And of course, I think that explains, and I follow the situation in, 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 in uh, uh, with Korea, for instance, in, in Ecuador also. And um, I say, okay, maybe, let, 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 and, and obviously, you know, the, 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 no, 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 you know, we are going to um, bring back foreign investment, we are going to really go. And let's, okay, let's, let's give it, give it a try. But of course, you know, what they are seeing is that this is absolutely, this attempt to re-establish neoliberal hegemony has been a total disaster. Uh, and so I think that the signs for Latin America are, are really positive. In, in, in uh, um, Mexico, with Grandma Lopez Obrador, for instance, in, uh, uh, in Chile, which is also a little bit a different case, but we've got the, the growth of El Frente Amplio, which is a left populist movement. So I think that we are about, hopefully, to see a, a, a return of the pink wave in Latin America. But nevertheless, I mean, there are, there are things that we've got to, to learn. It, it's always very, even, even if the situation are very different, not a question with, okay, you know, we are going to have a recipe to apply. But there is something to learn from, from the, for instance, what I will say is that the fact that you can't put everything on the question of redistribution, m m making people, you know, happy as consumers. I mean, you also need to create other form of identity, citizenship identity, you know, so that even in moment in which the economic situation are not so good, people are not going to uh, simply vote in favor or in, in function of their wallet, you know. So I think that they, they, they are a lesson. And of course, well, in, 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 uh, uh, when it comes to Europe, Obviously, we've got to try to understand, you know, what have been the, the problem. For instance, I think, but it, for me, it has been very, very painful to have to come to this conclusion, because I'm what you know people call a left-wing Europeanist. Uh, I must acknowledge that 
uh, at least so far, uh, we, the experience of Greece has shown that you know, it is not possible to put uh, uh, in practice an, uh, uh, an anti-austerity uh, program, uh, anti-neoliberal program within the context of the European Union. You know, so that, that, that's, uh, uh, that poses a serious, serious question. And, and, and I think, it's, of course, in, in, in Britain it's a bit different. Uh, at least you are not, even if there is no leaving of, the, uh, of Brexit, the fact that you are not in the euro make a big difference, you know, because in many places people say, no, the euro has been such a straight jacket. That, that is really the point in which, you know. So, but, yeah, but there are some, uh, at least, uh, questions I need to ask and try to see, for instance, the import. I, I would personally hope, and, and I do believe, that uh, a refoundation of the European Union is possible. And, uh, I know, I mean, there are people, let me say, no. It's impossible to reform the European Union. The European Union is intrinsically a neoliberal project, the only way to live. Okay, but what's the alternative? You know, I, I don't believe that uh, return to uh, the franc or the, 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 the mark or, and uh, what they call in France a sovereignist politics. So it, it's an it's a important question, I think, and, and left populist parties need to address that question, you know, what should be, what can, but I, there are people who believe, uh, well, let, let's, in, in fact, in, in Britain, the movement uh, uh, remain, reform and revolt, in a sense, it, it, it goes into that direction, a bit like that, so. okay, but, but, yeah, there are lessons to learn, that's for sure. I think that is a great lesson to take from this interview. Chantal Mouffe, thank you very much. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.